Hello everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. It is a general reading. Okay, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, and this is not specific to anything. This is not love, sign, career, whatever. It's not specific. It's just whatever spirit wants to talk about today, yeah? So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so I don't, uh, just a quick, just a quick tip, just a quick thing. I don't know if many of you, if, if you guys caught um, the live stream last night, but Betsy and I, Betsy is a very good friend of mine. She's of fearless intuition. She and I did a live stream, um, a discussion, a conversation for Twin Flames, and there was a little bit of a general energy checkup between the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine at the very end. But if you haven't checked it out, I would say go ahead and do that. We had a lot of fun. Um, we talked about a lot of things and you know, did our best to bring some clarity to some situations. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go right ahead and check it out. It is uh, called the Twin Flame Live Discussion with Betsy and Eric. Yes, you can find that in my videos. Okay, Wednesday, December 12th. I'm just gonna shuffle this up a few times and we'll see what we've got for today. I am seeing green <clears throat> and I'm hearing heart chakra, but it's interesting. It's kind of like a pale green, a pale mint green. It's like the green color, the emerald green of the heart chakra is mixing with pure white, um, maybe even smoky. Some of you, some people may be kind of guarding their hearts right now. Maybe putting on a brave face um, making it seem like everything's okay when deep down it may not be the best. I'm not saying we're all going through, um, it's, some of us may be going through a tumultuous period right now just because our heart chakras are opening up and cleansing, clearing, we're, we're clearing out our heart chakras. But for many of us, this is just like an, a minor overlay, um, you know, putting on a nice brave face to show people but you know, you're, we, we're still kind of some. Are, some people are still struggling a little bit. That's what I'm just what I'm hearing. But it's also a playful color. Many of us may be um, choosing to put a playful energy forward instead of, you know, what we may be really feeling down under, or at least there are some. There's some clearing, some purging going on underneath the surface, and we're still showing up in a playful manner, which actually I think is a really good thing. The divine agrees. Um, it, it shows a willingness to push through the negativity that one may be feeling or the pain that one may be, may be clearing out or dealing with or healing from. And honestly, if you can take this purging situation and make it as playful as possible, that actually will only help you get through it quicker. It's a challenge, yes. It's kind. It feels. It seems kind of contradictory, but if you can think of it as like a playful, like game type thing, you actually will have an easier time surmounting it. Oh. That was an interesting little channeling there. <laughs> One more shuffle, and then, yeah, cool. And then we're going to get into the, the discussion for the day. Wednesday, December 12th. Sip. All right. Let's see what we got today, guys. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Whoa, okay. That's a lot. 
so I'm going to stop right there. Wow. Okay, didn't waste any time. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. The tower is back. But this is really, this is an ongoing tower moment. I really don't think this is a fresh, this is a new tower moment. I really don't think it is. It's an ongoing situation. Okay, we've got, wow, we've got the hermit, divine wisdom, um, the queen of swords goes with those three. Well, here we go. And the queen of pentacles. Okay. We also have the two of swords. The Six of Wands, the Three of Swords, good Lord, the Queen of Cups. And then we also have two more cards that I'm going to get into in a second. So these are kind of like a hidden element here. My, my, my. It's almost as if there are two different stories going on here. I'm seeing a progression. All of it has to do with the tower. Yes, this is true. Um, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm, re, I def, I'm definitely seeing two different stories here. So the first story we'll go with is the, the, this bottom row here. The two of swords, six of wands, three of swords, and the queen of cups. Okay, so in this situation, the Queen of Cups to me is is symbolizing um, someone that is. I'm not going to get into the signs. The signs are not important. The, the the general story is what's important here. The Queen of Cups is someone in this situation is someone that is very much in love, or thinks they're in love, has some very deep feelings for someone. Might be a little bit obsessed, clingy, feeling like they can't let go, okay? Um, okay, you have, but you see, there's heartbreak in the situation. Two of swords, I'm sorry, yeah, two of swords, six of wands, and three of swords. So someone needs to make a decision around a situation with somebody. <laughs> so general um but it's not even like it's honestly i'm not even gonna say I, I take that back it's not really about making a decision here it's about seeing clearly in this situation there's heartbreak here something has happened in which someone's heart has gotten broken either someone actively did something to this queen of cups or uh this person who re who's represented by the queen of cups their ego is bruised in some way but this, this is definitely would be a tower moment for someone because their pride and their ego is getting in the way. And I really feel like the pride and the ego here is what's helping perpetuate this Three of Swords energy because someone just won't let go. Someone doesn't want to see clearly enough. Someone doesn't want to see the situation for what it truly is. And I'm getting an energy of them needing to walk away. Okay. But pride and ego I'm, I'm, are getting in the way with the Six of Wands here. And I really feel like it's someone is saying, this This almost feels like a Divine Feminine in a Twin Flame situation. It's like, well, no, I can't walk away. I can't. I have to do this. I've been doing this for so long or I've been feeling this for so long and there's no, there's no way I'm walking away from this now. Um, it's almost as if you don't want to see the situation clearly for fear that you might have been wrong. And it's really not about being right or wrong here. But see, that's where the ego comes into play. Because it's the ego that wants to tell you, that wants to, wants to bicker about the, 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 the difference between right and wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I told you so's and all that crap. But you see then... We have the second story, which is also has to do with a tower moment. But in this case, this individual here, or the energies that this individual are holding on to or are embodying, would be creating the tower moment. And this is a natural progression. 
Okay, so we have the energies of down here. This is this is like basically the lower point of view. Okay. In terms of like vibration, this would be someone in a lower vibration here. Queen of Cups, Six of Wands, Two of Swords, Three of Swords. But then on up here, this is someone that would be in a higher vibration because they've already gone through this energy down here. So this would be the Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and the Hermit. Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. Queen of Pentacles is a motherly energy, is a very stable, grounded, compassionate, caring energy. Um, and I, I often say that the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords are very much alike. Just It's just that the Queen of Pentacles is not as detached as the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is not even trying to get into the emotions of the situation. She straight up doesn't care about that. The Queen of Swords is all about, does this serve me or not? Because if it doesn't, it's going. There, there are no if ands, or buts about it. I'm just cutting it out. I don't even want to have a discussion about it. The Queen of Pentacles is very similar in the sense that um, she's very much one to teach, to, to, to dish out tough love. Even though she is connected to compassion and caring and love and respect, she is not afraid of dishing out some tough love because she understands the value in it. She understands the value in uh, um, the people that she loves, particularly the people that she loves, learning the hard lessons so that they can really make a better transformation for themselves and be a better version of themselves in the physical world. And pentacles or earth signs or earthly situations tend to be pretty rough in general. So the Queen of Pentacles is not afraid of getting down to dirty, getting down to the nitty gritty, doing the dirty work, doing the hard work that is needed, that is required to find success in this life. Okay. So, but this is the energy someone is embodying and they are able to do so through the divine wisdom that they have acquired over their journey here. And because of that, because of this divine wisdom, they're not afraid to walk alone. They're not afraid to go in their own direction, their own, do their own thing, walk their own path, forge their own path even. Now, the divine is really pushing me to say right now that this is a natural progression. Someone is needing to go through this ego battle here with the Queen of Cups, Six of Wands, Two of Swords, and Three of Swords. Even though there is this heartbreaking energy, and I'm not placing blame on anyone at this moment in time, I'm just saying there's heartbreaking energy. So either someone actively did do something to you, or you're in a place where you're allowing, allowing, if any of you watched the video, the live stream yesterday, that word came up. If you haven't watched the live stream between Betsy and I, please go do so. But some of you are allowing this Three of Swords energy to continue to perpetuate itself within your life. Why are you allowing it? Because your ego is in the way and you don't want to see clearly. You don't want to take responsibility, Two of Swords. The Two of Swords is yes it can be about indecision it can be about not necessarily having all the evidence not being able to see clearly but here mixed with the six of swords this is someone choosing not to see clearly because of pride and ego okay and because they're all up in their emotions and I really don't like to speak of the Queen of Cups in this way, but this is kind of what I'm feeling from her right now. Overly emotional to the extent that they're keeping themselves in a situation that is to, only to their detriment. Clinginess. Not being able to not go. Not being willing to let go. For fear of loss. For fear of abandonment also. But should you surmount, once you surmount this energy, you potentially, you, you, well, not potentially, but you would naturally progress to a more solid, more balanced and logical state. Even though, you know, the Queen of Swords is emotionally detached, the Queen of Pentacles is not. 
So there are there are emotions here involved. It's just it's way more grounded. It's way more balanced. It's balanced within divine wisdom. It's balanced within the understanding the truth of the self with the hermit here. Okay, we do have two more cards. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes. But the icing on the cake, the magician and justice. Wow. With all the heaviness that was going on here, this is a really great way to end the to, to, to end this section of the reading, to pull it all together, because ultimately this is the driving force of the situation, the magician and justice. Manifesting, manifestation, manifesting a better life for yourself. And what I'm seeing here is you is you have to go through this progression here. This energy of the Queen of Cups fighting the ego and the emotions refusing to see something for what it truly is refusing to take responsibility for the fact that one is allowing this energy to perpetuate in their lives getting through that mess progressing stepping up to a more grounded and balanced and wise state there's a ton of wisdom up here in this top row here between the hermit and divine wisdom Divine Wisdom is a unique card within this deck. This is the Moon Child Tarot. Um, and I actually, I'm going to read it, read a little bit of it, just because um, there are some good messages in there, some good questions to ask yourself. But we're manifesting through this. And so in order for this manifestation to happen, obviously there are going to need to be some tower moments. I mean, just this row alone, Queen of Cups, Six of Wands, Two of Swords, Three of Swords, just this row alone is indicative of a tower moment that is necessary, that is needed to come and strike this shit down. And then, like I said, once you get up to this upper, this higher level here, you basically become the tower, the energy of the tower moment. You become the energy of the tower. Because you will not tolerate, <laughs> you will not tolerate any sort of fuckery with the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. These bitches don't play, y'all. I mean, the Queen of Pentacles knows how to good time. The Queen of Swords does too. The Queen of Pentacles will maybe get a little, loo little, little loose, a little more loose than maybe the Queen of Swords will. But these bitches don't play when shit goes down. They are all about the business. They are all seriousness when they need to be. And you know that Queen of Swords don't play. That is Queen B right there. Now, this may sound strange, but those of you that are in this, this second row here, Queen of Cups, Six of Wands, Two of Swords, Three of Swords, you absolutely need to go through this situation in order to manifest what it is you truly desire. All right. This is, this is, these are two major arcana. Can't put, uh, add the, the hermit in, I'm sorry, the tower into the situation. You've got three. So it's not like this is anything that's going to happen overnight, but this is like a long-term situation. You're getting through the shit in order to manifest what it is you truly desire. It's almost like a purging energy. Mm -hmm. This tower energy runs deep. It's as if it's not just it's not just destroying any sort of. Um, structure that's on just strictly on the surface no it's like this lightning i see it. it's interesting because i'm seeing this lightning bolt striking the, the 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 structure on the surface yes but then going down deep into the roots into the earth into the foundation and literally blowing through it because some of these things that are we have been living the places that we've been living from right now that are deeply rooted so it's it's not going to be enough just to destroy what's on the surface because it's just going to grow from the roots again you've got to get down into the roots and change it up from there okay so now let's get into some clarification One 
Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Wednesday, December 12th. We're going to start with the middle row. And then we're going to go to the top row, and then we'll clarify the Magician and Justice here. All right. Please clarify. Three of Swords, Two of Swords, Six of Wands, and Queen of Cups. Thank you so much, Spirit. Ooh. Okay. Okay, good. Alrighty. Underneath the deck is the Seven of Cups. Now that makes perfect sense because this is a pretty confusing energy. There's a lot of illusion around. Um, you have... You do have the world here. The world did come out in reverse, um, but that just means that there's that the, this ending is on hold. It's a little bit delayed. Um, you're in the process of bringing this situation to completion, and I feel like for those of you that are resonating with this part of the reading or this part of the message, you are um, you're like basically in the heart of the situation. Okay, you have the Six of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles, so. Um, some advice for you guys, potentially, some of you could be moving on to a new job. The Ace of Pentacles has been coming up a lot lately. And this is definitely a reading um, geared more towards the Divine Feminine energies. So, and that has been coming up for the Divine Feminine a lot lately. The Ace of Pentacles and the Six of Swords, actually. But you're, some of you are moving towards a new job. Some of you need to move towards a new job, a more fulfilling uh, line of work says career says the, the divine um, but also you're in the process of moving towards a new beginning maybe even potentially a new commitment now that commitment would be most likely better suited for you if you were to learn the lessons in this situation recognize and that would be recognizing the Three of Swords energy for what it truly is, taking responsibility for, what is that? Allowing it to show up and wreak havoc in your life and then taking steps to remove it from your life. <clears throat> and this is not about blaming the other person. This is about saying, okay, look, I am ultimately, I am the one that made the choice to allow this into my life. The fuckery happened. I've learned from it. I don't want to do it again. Let's remove it. Let's cut it out. Okay, but some of you are in fact caught in some sort of confusion when it comes to this. Seven of Cups. And this is an and this is this is where the Queen of Cups is really coming into play. Because it's like overly compassionate. <clears throat> compassionate for oh gosh, it almost feels like Stockholm syndrome. For some of you, it is some sort of Stockholm syndrome. It's like, well, I mean, this person has done so much for me physically, like maybe they gave me a bunch of money or they helped me get on my feet or they just were there for me when I needed them and they're going through something and I need to be there for them now to repay them or they're just not in a good place right now. So it's, I understand, it's like, okay, look, I get that too, but in no way should you put yourself in danger. In no way should you put yourself at risk of getting hurt whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, just because someone else wants to be destructive. Yeah, you have two more cards here. Three more cards, I'm sorry. Wow. Holy moly. Look at this, guys. Eight of Cups, Death, and the Seven of Pentacles. So definitely an energy of reaping what you've sown here. Now... Um, there are some of you that are definitely in the process of walking away. And what's really, and if you haven't found the strength to do so yet, um, death is here. Transformation is here. So it's not like you really have to, hmm. Some of you, for some of you, it's not like you really have to work that hard to see this because ultimately you have you have the universe coming in and striking shit down on its own between the tower and death, okay? Um, but the hardest part of this transformation for you is going to be taking stock with the seven of pentacles. You reaping what is uh, coming to terms with the fact that you have re you are reaping what you have sown. Again, allowing this energy into your life and wreaking havoc. But don't don't think 
poorly of yourself because of that, because ultimately this is helping you learn and grow. Okay. So don't even look at it as like a failure or don't even, don't look at it like, you know, you're an awful person, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. No. Because if you are compassionate and trying to love and help people, then you're not an awful person. All right. So you can just cut that shit now. <laughs> but what you do need to learn are greater boundaries. And that's what you're learning here in, in this moment. Okay. So now moving up to this top row here, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and Hermit. Ultimately, this is the progression that you're moving towards. Some of you are already here because you've been through this bod this middle row here already. I feel like a mass majority of the viewers that you know watch would watch Morning Coffee or are following my channel have already made it here. If you haven't made it here yet, if you're still in this this middle row, don't worry. Please stick with us. Please stay with us because you are on the right path. You're getting there, all right? You have the world. The world is in reverse, but that's just because the completion is manifesting, is on its way. It's in the process. You're going through the actual death transformation phase right now. You're drumming, building up the energy to walk away, and you are in... in you're walking away with the Eight of Cups is really going to be successful once you understand your involvement in the situation with the Seven of Pentacles, okay? The Seven of Pentacles is the harvest, the energies of you are reaping what you have sown. Um, how do I plant better seeds for the future? What are these seeds that I planted in the past? How did I care for them? And how did they grow subsequently from the care that I provided to them? Or the lack of care that I provided to them? How do I get a better harvest in the future? You're on your way to this top row here of the Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and the Hermit, that inner light. Oh, ooh, I never read, hold on. Hold on, guys. I never read the card for Divine Wisdom because there's there are some good questions to ask in this card. So, Divine Wisdom asks, how is the universe expressing its wisdom to me? What new forms of knowledge awaken in me now? Uh, keywords are awake, Akasha, awakening, higher self, unity, expansion. I'll read this part. The floodgates are beginning to open as the seated wisdom of the ancient mysteries are now pouring through. This is the divine knowledge that exists within your cellular memory and the power of your own unique story. You may be experiencing a breakdown of the artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside, as new forms of wisdom stir within your heart. This may also indicate a deeper sense of awakening as you connect with various forms of teachings, lineages, or philosophies that call out from beyond this lifetime. I mean, that alone just sounds like a tower moment. So this is why I'm saying if you're in this top row here, you are actively acting as the energies of the tower because you're striking away everything that does not serve you. Everything that does not, um, that does not pro provide to your longevity, your health, your happiness, your stability, everything that, that does not serve you. And you have this energy of understanding what that would be, having a greater understanding of what that be, would be because you are not only are you connected with the universe, but you're connected with yourself between divine wisdom and the hermit, okay? Obviously, there's always more to learn and discover, but you have come to a good place right now where you know enough to know what is right for you, what is not, okay? So let's get some clarification here. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Spirit. Whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> All right. Underneath the deck, you have the Eight of Swords. So there's still some sort of anxiety, some uh, an energy of feeling, some sort of mental entrapment. So this is why I'm saying, you know, it's not like you, you're, you don't have any more to learn. You definitely have some more to learn. But oh, look at that. You've got the magician here. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh shit, you guys. All right, so we've got the Knight of Cups. We've got the Two of Cups. We've got the Hermit again. The Ace of Wands. The Six of Pentacles. 
the Queen and the King of Cups, and the King of Wands with the Moon. All right, well, here we go with these massive storylines. <laughs> Okay, so check it out. There is emo and there is an emotional balance here. I'm getting a few different things, all right? But there's a, definitely an emotional balance here. You have the king and the queen of... I'm sorry, no. This... Here we go. We have the... Her sorry, the hermit, the ace of wands, and the six of pentacles here. So this is an energy of coming to terms with what it is you truly need and desire out of life. What inspires you? What brings you happiness, what brings you fulfillment. You have connected with your inner self. You've found your inner truth. You've discovered more about yourself. You've become inspired about yourself and about your life and the direction that you want to go in and what you want to have, what you want to achieve. With the Six of Pentacles, that's between the Hermit and the Ace of Wands. And now with the Six of Pentacles, there is a desire to provide, to be of service, but also to receive service back to you. you. Many of you in this state have really understood the the value in balancing, in balanced reciprocation. Okay. And, oh, wow, this is really interesting. And so, and so because of that, there is a balance between masculine and feminine here that has really come into play. Emotional maturity with intuition brings a greater sense of balance. King of Cups, Queen of Cups, Two of Cups. Now from this place of balance here, there is manifestation of some sort of offer, some sort of invitation, a peace offering, Or you're in the process of manifesting this. But then finally, there's the moon with the king of wands. Now, to me, the king of wands does represent the energies of the divine masculine in the minor arcana. And in this sense, I'm getting an energy of the, the divine masculine energies are in that selfish, egotistical, um, reversed or negatively aspected King of Wands energy. Now that could be an illusion though, because what I'm really getting here is this King of Wands energy is shrouded in mystery. If we're talking Twin Flames, many of you don't know what's going on with your Divine Masculine. And I'm getting that it's really not a concern because you have this balance here. And ultimately you're manifesting some new sort of offer, whether that be with, from your divine masculine or this be from someone that's completely new. But, <laughs> and that's where, that's where the Eight of Swords comes into play. Because there's still some sort of mental entrapment here, to a certain extent. And it's it's getting, it's really, what I'm picking up here is really getting past the belief that you aren't good enough, you aren't worthy enough, that you're never going to find it. That still is a bit of a twinge here. And that's also where the Tower's energies are coming in and really getting to the deep, deep roots of the situation. Uh, specifically, though, I'm getting there are energies of some of you are still some, and I'm really, I really feel like I'm talking to the Divine Feminine camp here. Some in the Divine Feminine uh, Collective are still, even though you're in this Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and, the, and Hermit Energy, you know, you understand yourself better, you understand Divine Wisdom better, you got your mind and your heart balanced. There are still some fears around accepting love, fears around whether or not you could even, whether or not you're supposed to entertain anyone else other than your divine masculine. That's what I'm getting specifically for some of you with this Eight of Swords here. This is not for all of us, but there are still some 
in the Divine Feminine Collective that are subscribing to a belief that they can only hold space for or accept love from their Divine Masculine, their Twin Flame. And if that doesn't resonate with you, then that's not something you need to follow. Again, if you have not watched, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have not watched the reading that, or the discussion that Betsy and I had last night, please go ahead and check it out. Okay, because this literally, this came up too. This was one of the things that Betsy specifically wanted to talk about. It's subscribing to a belief system that doesn't resonate with you. If it resonates with you, if you feel good about holding space and only being with your divine masculine or your divine feminine for that matter, then go for it. But that's not what I'm getting with this Eight of Swords because there are some of you out there that don't believe in that. There are some of you out there in which that does not resonate with, but you're like forcing yourself to accept it. Don't do that. It's not worth it. Because ultimately, you could be cutting yourself off from, number one, some really beautiful, loving relationships. But number two, you could be cutting yourself off from some potential lessons that you could learn with these partners that you may not necessarily be able to learn with your Divine Masculine or your Divine Feminine, for that matter. Okay? So finally, I want to clarify the Magician and Justice here. Ultimately, justice is being served in the situation because of the magician energy. And the people up here in this top row definitely got magi the magician. So it's like you're really manifesting now, consciously. You're consciously manifesting. Well, let's see what we get here. Magician and justice. Thank you so much, Spirit. Ooh. The Page of Cups. <laughs> and underneath the deck. So far underneath the deck is the chariot. I'm trying to decide if I want to pull more. I really don't feel like it's necessary. Like I, I'm hearing that I could pull more, but it's just, it's not really necessary. Because the page of cups here is talking, this is the dreamer energy that's been coming out a lot lately. So your manifestations are really being fueled by your dreams. Also by, and Betsy's description of the Page of Cups is coming through here. Betsy sees, uh, Betsy's a fearless, fearless intuition. She is on YouTube, so check her out. But she does see um, the Page of Cups as someone that's not satisfied, wanting more. And that makes total sense here. And that in you wanting greater satisfaction we'll even say greater fulfillment would definitely be bringing justice to your life. And that greater fulfillment has everything to do with releasing yourself from whatever negative toxicity, three of, three of swords, um, backstabbing, betrayal, deceit type energy for this row here. For this row, it's about finding that counterpart that ideal partner. I mean, you do have the counterparts here, King and the Queen of Cups. But at this moment, and when you get up to this top row here, this is all about emotional maturity, understanding of who you are and what you truly want, and aligning with that counterpart that can reciprocate this for you. Okay? And then underneath the deck, so clarifying the Magician and Justice with the Page of Cups, is the Chariot moving forward towards your heart's desire. Okay. That's really beautiful, guys. Okie dokie. So now let's get into the oracle section here. Spirit and spirit animals, please give us the. Oh no, where did I put the book? Oh, there it is. Okay, best messages for today. Ooh, there we go. Firefly. Yeah. 
All right, we'll give it one more. One more, please, spirit. There we go. Oh, yeah, Cobra. All right. Wow. Eagle. Eagle's at the bottom of the deck. Um, let me get the book here. So I'm, I am going to read Eagle as well. Eagle's at the bottom of the deck. That just feels like it, it's a good one to read. Eagle. Okay, let's see here. Where's Firefly? We want to do Eagle first. There we go. Eagle, all-pervading power, truth seeker, transforms karma. The noble eagle emanates the light of the sun. This great bird is both physically and spiritually strong and represents mastery over the elements of fire and air. When the eagle appears, you'll soon be thrown into the karmic fire for the sake of your transformation. The eagle pushes us to be our best and brightest selves and stops at nothing to see us shine. Grasp the sun in your talons and hold on for the ride. You are stronger than you think, eagle child. When in balance, eagle is bright, radiant, and challenges. When out of balance, eagle is controlling. To bring into balance, one must step into the unknown. And that's definitely what the energies of the tower are bringing forward here. And it's funny because I was reading that card and it felt very similar to Panther, which to me is like the tower card of the animal spirit deck here. Um, and that did come out for the Twin Flame reading this past weekend as the shadow dynamic of the relationship. So next we have Firefly. Firefly. Inspired and fantastic, yet fleeting. The firefly, the firefly contains the light of a thousand stars. It's pure, radiant, and illuminating. This high-frequency charge cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, the Firefly card indicates a moment of inspiration or awakening that quickly fades if we do not catch it. There is Firefly energy behind every poem, song, and invention. Our job is to be ready to harness this creative spirit when it graces our path. What can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When in balance, Firefly writes, creates, and brainstorms. When out of balance, Firefly burns, is burnt out and feels dull. When it, to bring into balance, one must write a poem or draw. Okay, and finally we have Cobra, which is so perfect. Here we go. Cobra. Pausing. Waiting. The inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever present, ever protecting, ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests externally in those special guides who've led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, uh, Cobra is a student of life, is humble and wise. When out of balance, Cobra is a know-it-all and egocentric. To bring into balance, uh, one must take a class or study. Excellent messages so far. So now I would like to close the reading with an oracle card from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's give it a few shuffles here. Best messages for today, Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. There it is. 
Yes! Daring Rebirth. Oops. Wow. Look at that. Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite. Astrophilite. Daring Rebirth. I know that is right. Ugh. Yes, Hansi. Yes, Hansi. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. 41. Daring Rebirth. I don't know if I, you guys can really see that too well. Okay. We bring you the empowerment of Daring Rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses to defeat. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph in a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is so much possible for you. A radically different and new you to become. Believe, and so it shall be. Schwerd. Schwerd. Um. I don't think. I just want to read this, this first paragraph. It takes daring to imagine a new life. Boldness of spirit and willingness are needed to allow yourself to embrace and live that different life. You can be in this world as you choose to be. The truth of you can have many different versions, some fearful, some free. There is so much that is possible for you to experience in this life. You have the light and the power of a living sun inside of you. And that energy, the sun energy, came out, and I'm really glad I read it now because the sun energy came out in the eagle. Grasp that sun by the talons, eagle child, and hold on for the ride. You have more sun energy with the firefly. Even though it's slightly fleeting, you have a more illuminative, illuminatory energy here with the firefly. All right, so there you have it, guys. This feels really good. This was a really good reading, I really feel like. Um, thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope this was helpful for you. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Much love. Mwah! Bye!